Hi everyone, welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. And today in Anime Reaction, watch the third episode of Knights and Magic. Some more of those silly Mecha Kniggets. Set the episode, or I shall tend to you a second time. Three, two, one, let's jam. Three weeks in, and I've, uh, I didn't pull a Monty Python reference. I, I had to make up for that. I'm sorry. That well, mecha is majestic as fuck. Dang it. I was going <laughs> to say, you have a big ass grandson, then, King. Yuck, yuck. Oh, confirmed. Yay. That wasn't a compliment, dumbass. That looks very uncomfortable to sit in for yeah, extended period of time. Most thrones actually are. No, I was talking about Oh. Being on a knee. Yeah. Well, it certainly beats going to the gallows. Why does this king look like a Hokage? A robot! Don't think, just do. <laughs> He's about to. He's gonna say that loud. There we go. Dex guard. Dex guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no wonder he's king. He has too much dirt on Dex guard. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a practical reason. Yours are kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dick's card. And the regular guards, too. So go do it again. So, yo. It's the king, yo. Ho, oh, don't do it. <coughs> oh man see that's what the kids in robotics now should have done just go out and kill something first <laughs> that would have got the attention
I get. I hope. Hope. We're gonna actually get to uh, learn how to make one of these things. Learn how. Learn how it's made. Get over and done with in this episode. Hopefully. I'm not holding my breath on the details, though. Again, the kids evolved. I don't believe you. Eh, typical noble. I can't believe him. Why you like a ghost? <laughs> Sploosh. Sploosh. <laughs> huh? Oh. Rip. How, long, how long has he been in that corner? Mecca workout. I like it. Bring it. 
Come on. Let me have it, loop hair. <laughs> Show these amateurs how it's done. <laughs> Band the two top tonight. <laughs> Let her bang. It reminds me of a certain someone. <laughs> Toy. Duh. You damn right. I want to be more major to the story. <laughs> I want to be a tragic hero. This music sounds like a montage is coming up. Ah, the power armor. Fuck, fuck, ba -da -ba, ba -ba -da. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> 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 He is a full blown mecha sexual. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, in the gym class at the Michael J. Fox Institute. Wow. Damn. Are they? <laughs> Unique. Ooh. That's cool. I was wondering where the, ha the actual fingers were. Oh, your first experience with the trap will do that to you. <laughs> Pretty. God damn! Those little things with those big <laughs> things, like nothing else. That's cool. Not really. Though I guess for your first run, that's good. No one got killed, so that's a <laughs> that's a win. <laughs> really, bitch? Bread and circuses, my friend. Because it sounds foreign enough. Yeah, those sandbags really look like I don't think that do that's going right. to stop anything. <laughs> Really looks safe there. Hmm. 
Nice little looper effect here. The new Night Runners come new piloting tactics. All in. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Chuck. Jittle toss. Got him. Oh. Mana depletion. Yep. Rip. <laughs> Turn up, turn up. You know how. Hey, that um, guy doesn't look shady at all. Yeah, right. Shady dude doing shady shit. <clears throat> Paid off. I really hate the fact that they feel that there needs to be narration. Right? Hmm. Yeah, normally it's used for one of two purposes in anime I've seen with the narrator. Either comedy gold or going over material quickly. I think we know what it's used for here. Unfortunately. Yep. Because this lady's far too factual. Uh, came out with those giant mecha. She's a credit to her race. And apparently that's the 100 yard dash. It's a lot more than 100 yards. <laughs> Ah, he tripped and fell for the finish line. They gotta find three Jamaicans and make a bobsled team. <laughs> oh, the little shot there, Ernesti in his real harem. Oh, -ho. Cowboy's about to draw, huh? Well, at least I... At least it's a fun anime. This is a fun show. Right. Give it that. I mean, even if it's going quick and much quicker, or going through the source material quickly, it still hasn't lost my interest. Yeah, the unfortunate part is, I know 
that it's skipping over a bunch of shit. Mm. Right. The unfortunate... The, the, the weird part about it is... I almost don't care. I care, just... It hasn't really felt like too much of a detriment to the series like you would have seen with, um, you know, last season with uh, Akashic Records. Yeah. And, yeah. It was really bad. We might have we might have to uh, re- rethink our, our rule here. <laughs> well, this might be the exception of the rule, at least. Yeah. Or an, exception. Exception. <laughs> an exception. For and an here, exception. here's the novel. Fanta. Knights and Magic adapted. Knights and Magic adapted four chapters. One of them being the prologue. This episode. There are nine chapters in the volume, but the chapter four they, that they adopted, they adopted the beginning, which was the duel, and then they mm-hmm. skipped the rest of the chapter and showed the end, which I kind of get. They wanted to leave it off on that note. So I'm not quite sure if they're going to do two or three episodes for this volume. It depends on whether they show what they skipped in chapter four. Now for the actual for the actual adapted chapters, the prologue was rewritten a bit but still got the idea across, so I'm fine with it. fine. So just fine, so I'm okay with it. Though they failed to capture Ern's nervousness as in the light novel they said he had sweat dripping from him due to the nervousness. Their next two chapters, not including the fourth one because I already talked about that, they showed everything but a lot of lines and events were either rearranged and or rewritten a bit. Like the dialogue was a lot better than the line novel, uh, which pisses me off. But Shoulder shrug. And now for the thing I told you about yesterday, but upon rereading the first volume, I realized that my worst... Um, that my most anticipated scene was actually in Volume 1, and it was why Addie loves Ernie so much. I won't say what happened, but it involves Addie and Chid's brother. The scene was really good. Like, really good. It was such a good scene that melted my ice cold heart. Eh. So when I realized they skipped it, I grew a bit murderous. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, and that's, like... And, and that's, like, the biggest problem I have with, with you know, when they adapt something and they're, like, skipping over a lot of material is mm-hmm. that so most of the time they skip over good stuff just because they want to, okay, let's... Nobody really cares about this. Let's just get to the action. Like Tom Bombadil in the first... in the Fellowship of the Ring movie. Yeah. It's so weird, though, because... Like, I want to see those scenes. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, if you leave stuff out of an adaptation, but it's still a good series, it still holds your interest, then at that point, if you actually explore the source material, then those things, then scenes like uh, the scene Fantasy just uh, described come at you more as a pleasant surprise instead of glaring omission. At least that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I kind of I kind of feel the same way. I mean, the best adaptation is a perfect adaptation, one to one, right? One to one. I mean, yeah, that means that for, first of all, you have a story that lends itself to being adapted well. Yeah. So, Boku no Hero Academia, Shigatsu Akim no Uso, and so on. So, I mean, one-to-one one adaptations are preferred. The, uh, like the, first, the first season of SAO, one-to-one. So it, it did, everything was there. Hmm. Yeah, talk, Hero, talking about, like, the first 14 episodes. Yeah, first 14 episodes. After that, they fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Book No Hero, one-to-one adaptation. Everything is there. This is... It sounds like it's only like 30% of what's there. Hmm. Maybe even less. Would, would you give that estimation a fair pass? About 30%? 40%? Typing, typing, typing. Somebody's, somebody's typing a novel again. <laughs> um, I'll look at when he's done. <laughs> but... That after after hearing 
someone who's read the source material and their gripes with the situation, it that's what it feels like. Yeah. But if it wasn't for the fact that I know somebody who read the source material. Right. If you came into this without any knowledge whatsoever of the source material. It's a fantastic series. It's it might enjoyable. be a strong word. <laughs> Fantastic's a bit strong, if if not uh, hyperbole, I think. But it's good. It hasn't lost me yet, and that can only be a good thing. But I mean, if if you take out if you take out the bias that you have of there not being a one to, or a, a good adaptation, the animation's on point, the pacing's on point. Pacing may seem a little bit rushed. Again, but if you're still, thinking of it in terms of adapting the source material. Yeah. If you take the fact that it's being adapted, yeah, it's I, still a decent decent pace. We got plenty of action. We got plenty of information. We got plenty of you know, what's going on with the situation. We got plenty of... I do kind of wish they would ditch the narration, though. It, it, it kind of rubs it in your face that it's not a solid adaptation and honestly feels like a bit of a storytelling cop-out. Well, yeah. it's exposition. It's exposition not to one point up or one oh one on one. Exposition in a hurry, really. Yeah, and that's well, what it's you... a clear, clear, <laughs> clear case of telling and not showing. Yeah, it is a much better deal to. There we go. Lazy exposition. You always want to show, not tell. That's not what you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what they're doing is not what you're supposed to. But despite. The exposition, everything else here, it's looking to be a pretty decent series. And I can't, ho I can't hold those two things entirely against it, because I am enjoying the series. And that's what's weird about this one. Yeah, I'm trying to draw a parallel uh, between, you know, series I've kind of gotten hooked on but were just awful adaptations um, not as buried treasure comes to mind actually wasn't this one pretty Trigun thank you thank you thank you horrific <laughs> adaptation <laughs> doesn't even scratch the surface of the tip of that iceberg like I remember and still oh, that, damn I remember you showing me the fight with uh, Valley of the Horn Freak it, oh, in Maximum? In Maximum. There and you go. watching in the anime, it's two completely different things. And I dare say the one in the anime was incredibly lame by comparison. He does kind of go out like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but despite that, it's a good series. One of them, oh, yeah. I think one of Otaku Saga's collective all-time favorites. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks or, for bringing up that example I forgot about. Or even like the the first Full Metal Alchemist series. I like the full the first Full Metal Alchemist series, but well, it's not even really an adaptation. Yeah. <laughs> when you adapt something so badly, you have to make an entire second series to make up for it. Well, and still knock it out of the park in both on both counts. Yeah. I don't know. What I really, really would like from this series is like one of those extended cuts like like with what they did with Lord of the Rings where they mm. just they in, they that's never gonna happen I know it's never gonna happen it's, uh, again it's but, like asking Peter Jackson for Tom Bombadil yeah enjoyable as it is but yeah yeah like I, I, I do enjoy this, but deep down, it really does bother me that I know that they're skipping over a lot of stuff. Mm. I guess it depends on how much you like uh, light novels, manga, you know, the printed source material. In this case, or well, maybe it's. I guess it depends on how important you hold the source material. I think it, I think it's also uh, in a lot of cases with with these types of light novel adaptations. It's also a lot about how much you actually care about the characters, like, day-to-day, -day, what's going on, mm -hmm. like, 
you know, them actually learning about stuff rather than them just saying, oh, by the way, he learned about all this. Right. Um, Because that's like my favorite parts of some of these light novels Mm -hmm. is is that stuff. It's not necessarily the, oh, let's get into the action. You know, nobody nobody cares about him learning stuff. Like what knowledge pool is he, what knowledge pool is he reaching into to make the, uh, the mini knights? Right. What or, knowledge pool is he reaching into to make the uh, the caster guns? Or what knowledge pool is he reaching into to redesign that silhouette knight on the fly? I was about to say, uh, just learning how to use the magic in this world, period. All he says in episode one is, it's oh, it's similar to coding, and then we never touch up, back up on that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the skip details are definitely something that needs to be done. Yeah, for some of, the, of those details, it, it doesn't... It needn't take a whole lot of time. It needn't take a whole lot of screen time, either. So, I guess they, just got, they probably should have done a better job picking and choosing what to leave in. Yeah. Perhaps. But as for episode three, I still want to keep going. And that's, that's the weird part. Yeah. I... I... I the fact that I know it's, it's rushed, but I don't hate it. <laughs> I know it's I rushed, know. but I actually kind of like it. The only thing I can for at this point, the only reason I can see us like our opinion changing of this series in the future is if it pretty much does advance. Oh yeah, later that, on. that was actually a good a good point there, Fantasilian. and I wanted to talk about what they did with Dietrich mm. because at the be- like the beginning of the episode, he's sitting there like in the fetal position. And, you know, he's all fucked up or whatever. And then, like, five minutes later in episode time, we see him, like, have a complete turnaround. And suddenly he's, like, gung-ho and in the training and all. Yeah, and I'm like, what? That happened. That was, like, one of the parts in the episode where I was like, man, they must have skipped over a lot. Like, holy shit. But, yeah, I mean, they're skipping over stuff right now. But, well, as I was saying before this detail came to light. Though, yeah, um, the one thing that's going to keep us from, like, our opinion going downhill, the one thing that's going to prevent that from happening is if the series doesn't pull a vanitas and skip more and more as it progresses. Yeah. Trying to, you know, well, rush through to get to that ending point that they want for the series. It's going to... I'm, I'm 90% sure they're going to continue to skip shit. Well, it's not necessarily <laughs> continuing the skip shit. It's, not the it's fact skipping right. more and more. Exactly. I hope they don't pick up the pace of skipping. Yeah. Because that's what Vanitas did, and well, yeah, I don't Vanitas want that to got to the this. point where they they basically were trying to go through an entire novel in an episode and a half, yeah. and trying to get it to where they had like this big fight at the end of every episode, and it doesn't work for that series. So, like, this one, I know that they wanted to fit in the the fight with, uh... The, the sparring match? Yeah, the sparring match between the captain and the lady... Mm. Big boot pilot? Big, Big boot, boot pilot. pilot. Boot pilot? pilot. Oh, pilot. pilot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sync ratios are off the charts. <laughs> right? I know that they wanted to get to that point and yeah. try to just move things forward right. really, really quickly. And again, that's what sent warning bells off in my brain about, you know, another vanitas happening. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. They tried to get to the good bits of action at the end of the episode, but it ended up being too much yeah. of the same thing over and, and over Probably again. if there's one thing I could say is that no no animators, really, no director. Uh, it's it's okay not to have a fight in every episode. Uh, that's a magic. Stop it. <laughs> When you go right on here, right. <laughs> In fact, like the um, the the things going on in the background. I'm, how much how much information is being passed around in the background? We got that sly dog. Yeah, we have the mole. That's right. And we also have uh, the the, the twins. The twins. Pa- the twins' dad. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. the duker. Who wanted to uh, douchebaggery or whatever. So it's like he just wanted to spy on on Ernie for them. Is yeah. that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? 
It actually doesn't say. I am assuming it's bad because it's... From what I can extrapolate from that scene, it's not forthright, but I think the dude just wants to take credit for helping Ernie out just to earn brownie points with the king, and that's about it. He doesn't want to, like, screw Ernie over because that goes against his interests. But again, underhanded. Yeah. word for it. It all seems underhanded, and I'm interested, did they skip... Do they skip anything from that? Because that's actually pretty pertinent. Or yeah, with the uh, with this little uh, underground resistance, or is it even that? You know, the uh, conspirators to overthrow the king, or are these two things connected? Oh, yeah, are they summoning one of the ones like you know making these uh, demon beasts and all that for reasons why? I don't know. Maybe like Bertolt and Reiner and Attack on Titan, right? You know, they have their own agenda to destroy everything. Anyway. Anyway. It's all... So many questions. (sighs) Yeah. But so epic. Still awesome. Even though we're not really getting answers, it's still pretty awesome. That fight scene was awesome. Uh. I actually actually like the montage of uh, Ernie and the, you know, the school children building or repairing the silhouette night best, I think. Or more coming up with new ideas and then suddenly they're already built. Yeah. Well, I actually really like... What I really liked about that is it gave you that one little detail. Which is? Just just the, just the like, that the few little details that they did give us. Well, yeah, it gave us uh, details on exactly how Ernie was improving the Silhouette Knights. Yeah. Like, hey, instead of just, you know, laying the fiber in, you know, straight, why don't you weave it so that it's more like a muscle? Why, yeah. yeah, why don't you make it make it a rope? It shows uh, Ernie as, you know, kind of the problem solver, the guy who will think outside the box, kind of reinforce that. Yeah, a bit of character development on his part. Anyway, I think I'm done with this one. Hey, we, 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 we beat this horse pretty well dead. I can probably beat this horse for another half hour. I'm sure you can. Phrasing. Next next week. <laughs> so, let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Hey, thumbs up if you like it, and if you're interested in joining our Discord channel, ask for it in the comments below. I will never look at horses the same way again. That's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. Well, there is that centaur anime. See you next time.